Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China. I was asked a question about religious freedom in China, and I thought it was a fair question. If China has religious freedom, how is it that Falun Gong is persecuted? It's a fair question, and if anyone chooses to do so, they can read all about Falun Gong's side of the story on their English language website, minghui.org, and there are links on there to Chinese, if that's your preferred language. There isn't much to say about Falun Gong except that they're not a religion, they're a cult, and cults are not legal in China. And we'll go into that in a moment, but let's look at some of Falun Gong's more outrageous allegations. The organ harvesting myth has a basis of truth in it, as do most horror stories about China, a tiny kernel of truth which has been misunderstood, magnified, and then maligned because, hey, it's China. One other is that the Chinese government created a story of self-immolation of a practitioner, and this one is hard to believe, as the entire world saw in 2001 when a group of five people attempted to do so. Three survived, one of whom remained a practitioner of Falun Gong, and the other two left the cult. The three survived purely because of medical intervention by Chinese doctors. And that should tell us something. The full story, including the results of international interviews with all three of the survivors, was published by the Chinese Embassy to the European Union, and I've linked that in the description. There are stories that Falun Gong practitioners are arrested, executed, then organ harvested. People who break the law in China are arrested, and anyone who has seriously broken the law can be executed. But many people who are sentenced to death are suspended for two years and then commuted to life imprisonment. In China, people who are sentenced to life imprisonment can be released after a period of good behavior. So a death sentence doesn't always appear to be what it is. It could mean serving as little as 11 years in prison. Until November 2014, China did harvest the organs of executed criminals, and that's the basis of the story. Now, China gives condemned prisoners the option. I have no idea if any incentive is also given, but it is optional, and that's the law now. So we can see where the stories get their legs, but there's so much information, misinformation on Falun Gong. There are, however, some academic reports with citations and evidence to support the fact that this is not a religion, but a cult. However, what is a cult and what is a religion? Generally speaking, a cult is a group that uses psychologically manipulated practices. And for many people, that's also a religion. All religions are cults. So we need to look a little deeper. Words such as unorthodox, spurious, strange, or extreme usually help to describe cults. But it's still a very difficult definition to pin down, as everyone has different beliefs. In France, Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientologists, among many others according to Wikipedia, are identified as cults. In the USA, there are no illegal cults. They're, they're free to practice within the law. So people in the USA have the freedom to be manipulated, have their wealth stripped, as long as the cult they've fallen in with don't fall foul of the law. Cults there can even apply for tax exemptions as religious entities. When Chinese people complain about this in the USA, they are, as Chen Zhen and Li Feng found to their cost just a few months ago, arrested and charged as Beijing-backed spies. There is religious freedom in China, but unlike the USA, there are also laws related to that freedom. Instead of asking, why is Falun Gong banned? It would be a reasonable question to ask, why is Buddhism not banned? Why are people still allowed to practice Qigong and Tai Chi? If this is all Falun Gong is, then it should be okay. Falun Gong isn't banned because it's a threat to the Chinese government. It's banned because Falun, Bo Falun Gong breaks many Chinese laws. According to Article 36 of the Constitution of China, the state protects normal religious activities. No one may engage in activities that disrupt public order, 
impair the health of citizens or interfere with the educational system of the state. And Falun Gong does all three. Donations in China are limited to 100,000 RMB, about 16,000 US dollars, and religious leaders are not allowed to enrich themselves. So no leaders here drive Rolls-Royce cars or have private Learjets, as they do in many other countries. Li Hongzhi, Falun Gong's founder, lives on a private 427-acre estate in New York and is by all accounts a multimillionaire. China's government reported during 92 and 93, he managed to raise 1.2 million RMB, an enormous sum of money for the time. And that would be in breach of China's laws because, as we know, most of the money religious leaders collect, they collect from poor, desperate people. Another one is that it's illegal to impose your religion on others, and cults do that. They don't allow a member to leave, and they also encourage non-members to join neither of which is allowed. China has a long history of rebellions and other evil acts caused by missionaries and doesn't want a repeat of this. Neither do Chinese officials want to see a Waco-style massacre as carried out by the FBI on one of the USA's cults, or a mass suicide <clears throat> as happened in Jonestown, or mass murder attempt such as the sarin subway attacks in Tokyo. They don't want leaders assassinated by religious cult members, as appears to have happened to Shinzo Abe in Japan, who was allegedly murdered by a Korean cultist. But most of all, China doesn't want another Boxer or Taiping rebellion, which were both caused by religion. Finally, any religion which discourages modern medical treatment is illegal in China. If religious leadership requires members to seek religious guidance instead of seeing a doctor, that's illegal. Falun Gong fall over in all of these rules. But all of this doesn't explain how does Falun Gong interfere with the education of the state? Well, in China, no religion may speak against the state, but this doesn't mean that they must speak for the state. They cannot condone violence, they cannot encourage separatism or sedition, and they cannot be extremists in any way. Self-immolation which was encouraged as a form of protest by Falun Gong, is an extreme example of this. Hence, the ban on Falun Gong as a religious entity. If Falun Gong is above board, why does the Shenyang Dance or acrobatic group not affiliate with them in their advertising? The Epoch Times is Falun Gong, but they don't advertise the connection. China Uncensored on YouTube and many others are Falun Gong, but they never tell their viewers that they are. The new Tang Dynasty TV channel and the Sound of Hope radio channel are all Falun Gong, but none of them will ever tell the audience of the connection. So we must ask ourselves, why would that be? I'm not an investigative journalist. I'm just a person who delves deeply into open source material to join dots and try and find the truth. The ABC in Australia have a very poor reputation in China but two of their journalists did delve deeply into Falun Gong, and they spoke to people who have been involved in the cult. They created a lengthy article, which is linked in the description, which describes the problem many people have with Falun Gong. Why China will not allow them to practice. And here's the main reason. If you believe in God, take a look at the works of Falun Gong. I've linked their own website. I've given the names of several of their channels. Don't believe what I say. Go and take a look at them for yourself. If you believe in God, the word of Jesus, or the teachings of the, pro of the prophet Muhammad, then I'm certain you would agree with the Chinese government. This really is a dangerous cult, and it needs to be stopped before they go too far. Thanks once again for watching Jerry's Take on China, and I will see you next time.